welcome to Sailing Guitar Bar. This is our 42-year-old sailboat home and we're currently on the hard stand and getting her ready to get put back in the water where she belongs. This episode, we're gonna walk you through all of the projects that we need to do to get back in the water. There's quite a few of them. They're not all costly, but we're gonna break it down with time, budget, and how we're going to manage getting back in the water in the next seven weeks. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Well, let's get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. So as you can see, we are back on the boat and we have had a little adventure. If you'd like to see more of that, go and sign up to our Patreon and become a patron and you'll be able to see where we've been and what we've been up to. So in the meantime, we are going to share all the projects that we have to do before we get back in the water. I've had a lot of people emailing and sending us messages saying, I'm sure you're back in the water already. And uh, I just wanted to fill you in that we are not. <laughs> we still have some projects. And today we're going to run through all the projects that we need to do before we get back in and also the projects that we have left to do before we cross any oceans. So they will not all necessarily get done before we splash, but hopefully the main ones will get done very soon. All right, doing very well, thanks. Yeah, so I'm just, um, I've got the design done for your uh, in-boom furler. Right. I want to make sure that we have everything in order for you as we kind of move forward. Cool. Awesome, thanks, we really appreciate it. Okay, thanks, I'll talk soon. That was Jeremy from Precision Sales and he just wanted to run over a few last little bits of detail with our mainsail and that is one of our key items that we were waiting to uh, get underway which is going to take six weeks. As you've seen in the previous videos it caused us a lot of trouble furling. We had battens falling out of pockets. The sails were just showing their age. They were old and obviously that is one of our main ones and that will be giving us our timeline. So. At the moment we think it's going to be about six weeks and that will be the time in six weeks when we want to get back in the water. These are all the tasks that I'm about to show you that we need to get done before we get back in the water. The sea chest. We all know about the sea chest, you've seen it, but what has to be done to finish it? Well I'm about to tell you. Obviously we have to replumb all our connections and we've got to retie all that back in. There's our engine, plus we'll have to do a slight modification here to allow for our new little buddy to the engine room, which is our gen set. So we'll be plumbing off here. Also, as we removed the sea chest, this here, it's, it's probably okay, but while it's out, and we get new piece of pipe, some new clips, 50 bucks done. And then also the other part, because of the height change, is our bracket. So this here will have to be cut off re-welded, I think there's like a, an inch or so different because these bolts are actually all integral in the boat. So we'll just change the height. I think it's an inch higher, which is no big problem because now we have a welder and uh, this will be my first project, guys. So I've never TIG welded before. So as you can see, there's the TIG welds. Let's see if mine look anything like that. This little part of the project's not so much money, it's more time. Uh, like I said, there's probably 50 bucks there, a little bit of work with filler rods and whatnot. Enough, probably $60 job all up, but probably maybe a day to two days by the time we play, cut, get this, tie that, tie all this in, and do slight alterations in the engine bay. And we know that that part of the boat will be perfect. So before we set sail, this is one of the jobs that we may be able to leave without fixing, but it could be slightly dangerous because you can't really see out of them and vision on a boat is very important. So we are going to have to do something here. You can see all the steels exposed here. This whole lot of canvas here is, I've previously just patched it and nursed our way up to here. It's pretty flimsy, as you can see. Uh, but it was just a, it was a quick fix to get us going. I just put two big solar panels on top and we at least had power and we're underway to get up to here to do our work. But now that we are here, two main options we're thinking of is just redoing the canvas and maybe tightening up this structure. We do have a welder now, so I could tighten everything up and put a few extra braces and call it done after a new canvas bimini and a new canvas dodger and some clears that we'll be able to see through. Price-wise, I'm not sure of that yet. 
or the other option is is we do a hard top with some sort of NIDA core or some sort of core, epoxy it and have a hard um, dodger top and make some supports up and we can actually leave the whole thing open until we get more funds later down the track and put some clears on that. So there's a couple options here and we're not too sure just at the moment but it is a project if we have time we will have to do something with all well, the Dodger and the Bimini just reupholstered. I'm saying approximately $1,000 for the top, maybe $1,500 for the bottom. So it could be anywhere from two to $3,000 and probably, you know, by the time you um, start the project, it's probably a day in pulling it apart, day in putting it back together and maybe a few days for a company to stitch all this up, maybe give them a week and they'd have it back to us. So maybe a week or two. But then the other option would be to do the hard Bimini. I think we could sort of maybe put ourselves in for a week or two and um, get this glassed up, supports on and have ourselves a hard dodger. We could maybe knock this out for a thousand to two thousand dollars, opposed to maybe a, a dodger, a solid dodger like this could be up around ten thousand dollars from a factory. So I think we could get that right down. And that's probably the option I'd like to go for. So it's nice and strong, something to hold on to, something to support these panels. But there are two options at the moment. And I think from start to finish, we could probably do the hard top in about two weeks. Okay guys, ventilation on the boat needs a little bit of attention here. This is gonna be another project. We are going to replace all these. They're, they're all pretty sad, especially this thing. I think it even, the whole thing is pretty sad as you can see. It just lifts off. They're pretty poorly made and they've all been screwed into the deck, so which I don't like. I'm going to have to check all these holes and make sure there's no rot in the core. So I'll re-drill these, epoxy them. Um, and what we're going to do is just put some mushroom vents on here and get a more of a low profile as opposed to a big bulky derade like this. You can see the screws hanging out of size. There's, they're, bro oh, they're broken. You know, all the tops are really sad. So we've got some nice little mushroom vents to put on here. It's one of those jobs, you know, it could take four hours or it could take a whole day or two, depending on once we remove this and make sure there's no rot or anything around here. So each one's gonna be different. Um, the main thing is just to get everything sealed up so no water can penetrate the hull. I think we have seven of those. We only at the moment have two mushroom vents. The, uh, they were bought from our Amazon list, so thank you for those, and we're about to put those on. We do need five more, but that's no biggie. The, the, the main one is these two here to start with. If all goes well, if there is rot in here, it could be two days by the time we have to core out around it and fill it with thickened epoxy. So we'll know more once we start digging into that. Okay, so our next project is our windlass. Now we have serviced and put in a brand new engine in this windlass and it works fine. But there is one problem or two problems that we need to address with this. One is time consuming and one is costly. So we'll start with the costly one and I'll explain why. The first one, and this happened on Catalpa 1, we have, I think it's a, 5.8 chain, whatever that is in millimetres, I don't know, but it's a lot larger than the chain we have. We have a 3.8 chain which is like 10 mil, so we need to switch this out or increase our anchor chain size. Now, we had reasonable quality anchor chain and we've just had it re -gowed, so we're not going to change our chain out. So the galling process was only a couple of hundred dollars as opposed to a couple of thousand dollars for a new chain. So the cost involved here would be around $500 for a new gypsy. Now at some stage, this has been replaced over the years and the line of the chain when it's pulled up is, is, is the chain is actually getting pulled to the center. So the rollers at the front are set in too far and as a result have bent the ends and the chain slips over when you're pulling up. It's quite a dangerous little setup. So there's two options here. I have to remove that regardless because they've got to be either spaced out a little bit more so there's a more even pull as opposed to pulling on the angle because this is quite a big windlass. And I can either try and fabricate that section up there and straighten up what we have 
Or I can see our friends at Mantis Marine and they do some beautiful bow rollers and I could purchase those for about a thousand dollars and pretty much just weld those straight. Well I wouldn't actually weld them on, I'd actually make a plate there and tap some holes in there and we could bolt on two new Mantis ones and therefore if we were to have an accident or a boat was to run into us it's just a matter of unbolting them and it's a standardised fitting from Mantis and you can just put a new bow roller on. So if someone bends your bow roller in a big blow you can say hey Mantis number two bow roller please and you can bolt it on as opposed to a welded on one like we have. So there's a few, a couple of variations we can do there. One is just try and fix up and bend what we have or get a nice Mantis one. But for us, it's a very important part of the boat and we want to try and get that bit worked out so that we have safe anchoring. This is another project that really needs attention. So we have a brand new mainsail coming and we have an infurling boom. These booms can work really good and they can be really challenging. And one of the things that we need to stop it from being so challenging is a solid uh, boom vang. We've looked at one there, Gahua. Gahua, is that how you say it, Gahua? They do one for about $1,000 um, and can customize that to here so that we keep our angle that's needed for the furling to work nicely. So at the moment, I just jerry-rigged this. It did actually have one um, on at one stage but when we purchased the boat it was nowhere to be found whether it was broken or getting service we're not sure but it does need replacing so not so much a project but it will be an expense of a thousand dollars maybe a few lines on top of that and at my end there's not too much work it's more so just measuring fittings and and measuring lengths and um, measuring the where everything's going to work out so there's probably a couple of hours work for me just to go over and measure everything that's needed for Gahua to do this and the whole mainsail should be back in action. This is the mizzen and you can see here this is the solid vang that's set up. There was one at some stage on the front but we do need to replace it because we don't have one. This is the one up the aft and this sail fells really well. The angle's set right and there's no dramas with this so we want to try and achieve the same at the front. That's a similar item to what we're looking at replacing. And around the chain plates, we're just going to put a little bit of 4200 and make sure they're all sealed up. There's quite a few of those around the boat. We'll try and get to all of those. So this job is tidying up our solar arch at the back. We're going to reinforce it so it's a lot stronger and we're going to make some racks so it accommodates for our surfboards. So a rough estimate there um, in materials I'm guessing will be up around the four or five hundred dollars and the rest will be in labour and that will see us with a nice solid support for the solar panel and we'll work it out so that we can fit all our surfboards at the back so they're off the deck. Okay, so we have quite a big high field tender with a decent sized motor and we don't want that to drop off while we're sailing. So there is another part here. All these um, blocks are getting really old and sad and the line's really chalky and falling apart. So we would like to replace our blocks and replace the line so that we don't see our tender falling off while we're going along. I haven't priced any of this up yet at a guess, maybe another $400 by the time you buy new blocks and um, new running rigging for that, new line for that. So there's probably a half a day there playing around, rigging up new lines and um, putting on new blocks and just making sure that the actual lifting side of it's all nice and strong. Next project. Again, two options or three options for this one. You can see our safety lines have these plastic coated lines that are all cracked and rusty and if someone like me throws 100 kilos at it while we're underway and I fall over, good chance I'm going to fall over too. So two options here. We replace all these with uncoated stainless steel wire or we can use Dyneema or ideally, because we have a welder, we could weld a nice solid rail on around the whole boat. So cost wise, because we could do the welding ourselves probably very similar to replacing all the lines. So guys, I haven't done any pricing on this yet because we haven't really come to a conclusion of what we want to do. But I know for me to get the solid tubing is about $500 to run solid rails around. So I'm assuming by the time we replace all the wire and 
um, fittings for the wire and that's probably going to be around the same price anyway. Obviously if we had a well to do the rails it would be quite a lot more, I'm talking materials only, um, and labour, so which would be myself. And we could go the solid rails route which I'd probably prefer, but that's something to think about but it does need to be addressed for our safety. Okay, one of the other jobs here is a little uh, chair for Sarah to sit when we're sailing along. Maybe, we'll see if we've got time. But what we do need to do is these two navigation lights aren't actually working. I have plenty of wire, so it's a matter of just checking these connections, running a new wire down into the uh, locker compartment, the anchor locker, and um, attaching those and we'll have nav lights. Not a big one, I have all the gear to do it, just time. Probably three hours and we'll have this one done by the time we solder up all new or heat shrink all new wires on here and make it all nice and waterproof and clean it all up. It's not a project, it's a bit of a luxury. We don't need it but we do use it a lot. It's a really worn out barbecue. All underneath is all rusted out, the plate's all rusted out. And we have two loose gas bottles on the deck which we would like to make some brackets for. Now we have a welder, we'll be able to get some brackets made. It's not a must do, but it is on the list at some stage because we do love our barbecues and cooking outside. So our little uh, plastic fittings are quite old and brittle. They're like air conditioners and water maker brines and that. They're only small little plastic fittings and they're not very expensive. So we may look at just replacing them as we did have one if that is the same age, we had the one that leaked in the kitchen that just broke. So we may replace these. Okay, so the bottom obviously has all been beautifully done with our epoxy barrier coat, but we're still missing seven through holes. So as far as the bottom goes, there's probably another four to five hundred dollars in skin fittings. They're all ready to go, ready to put back in, but we don't have them. They're waiting at maybe the Chandlery in San Diego for us to go and purchase. We did remove a transducer that was sort of intermittent. It was working and then not working. So we'll need to get a transducer for our Raymarine Exium, but this transducer will have a temperature transducer and paddle all in one. That's why we got rid of uh, one of the holes. Just before we go back in the water will be when we do lift the boat, we're going to drop the keel out and clean the whole inside of the cavity and sand down the centerboard, reassemble that. So that'll be hopefully when we go to go back in the water, the day before we try and get lifted, drop the keel and have one day to try and work on before we go back in the water. So there's not much involved with that apart from just labour and timing. Okay, and then that just leaves us with the antifoul to be put on and our prop speed to be put on, which we'll do when we confirm our date that we're going in. That's about it for the bottom, guys. It's uh, not a lot here. It's more of a waiting game till we know we're definitely going in. We'll apply the antifoul, which will take a day, which we have. We'll apply the prop speed, which will probably take a few hours, which we have. The last of the sort of major jobs are back in the engine bay. As you know, we've put the gen set in. It's not plumbed in and the electrical side of it's not finished. So there is a little bit of work there. There's definitely a few days work and a little bit of materials. But we do need to run a exhaust line through to an exhaust box through to the back of the boat. And then we do need to get a converter for the gen set. So what that will do is step the 240 volts down to 110 for our boat. Um, we'll have two sources of power there, as I spoke about, so we can run a dive compressor at 240 volts or anything else in the rest of the boat at 110 volts. So that being said, the converter box is probably going to be about $800. So our exhaust lock will probably be about $100 and our exhaust line, wet exhaust line, which we'll probably need a roll of. So A, we'll use it for the exhaust line on the gen set and B, there is a few deck fittings that we're going to replace, which I didn't tell you about up top. Uh, which we have, and that'll be the same hose that runs our deck scuppers down and out. So they're quite time consuming jobs because the pipe is in behind all the cabinetry and whatnot. But that's the bulk of the bigger stuff and the costing sort of stuff that costs a lot more money. The rest of the little jobs is more time consuming and, and a lot of the stuff we have for that sort of side of it. But expense and time are two things that we're trying to shuffle at the moment. and. 
along with visas and all the rest of it and living and trying to have a bit of fun along the way. But uh, that's the challenges of boat life, for us anyway. So I hope that brings you a little bit more up to date, especially for those people that uh, keep telling us, uh, where's your location? Whereabouts are you sailing at the moment? We're sailing in the bloody down the hard stand. We don't even actually have the sails on. They will be this week though. Uh, this is one of the jobs we're going to do is put our sails on. We're going to get our head sail on this week and another few weeks we'll have our precision main. But there's still lots to do in between, as you've seen. So the problem we've had and the reason why we've been on the hard stand for so long is because we do not have a massive budget and we don't earn a lot of money. So when we are doing projects, a lot of the time we are waiting Till we get paid waiting for money to come in so that we can buy the next thing to do the next project so it's not necessarily the reason we've been out is because everything's taking so long a lot of it is waiting for parts waiting for money so we can buy parts and working out another way if we can't actually afford to do that project so we wanted to put this video up to share with you exactly what we're going through because it comes what are we, what are we going through well, it's hard. This is this is uh, it's been a really hard for us. And I know 6 months doesn't sound long, but it feels like a lot longer than 6 months. I, I added up the other day. I'm like surely we've been here longer than 6 months and it's long, but what we've achieved in that time doesn't feel like a lot for us because if we had the money, we would be back in the water already. So, this has been a very very big test of patience for us because our channel is supporting this project it has been a lot slower than we anticipated but in saying that without you guys without the support of the people who watch us without our patrons without a lot of the people that have like come forward and helped us we wouldn't have been able to pull this off and i i honestly sit here not knowing how we've pulled it off so far we want to share our adventures and show people that it's possible, but we also want to share that the realistic side of it is it's very, very hard and it's not something that I suggest that you jump into and go start your boat life off this way because, I don't know, a lot of people probably wouldn't get to the end of it. So in saying that, there's a lot of negative there and I apologise, but that's the truth. It's been a really, really big struggle. So getting back to the point of the thing on the screen, it's broken down into what it's gonna cost us to get back in the water. All right, guys, so Sarah's put a bit of a breakdown um, of where we're at. It's not everything. There's a lot of little things missing and there's a lot of big items missing too. So what is on the screen at the moment is showing you the breakdown of the projects that we have to do, how much approximately, obviously it could be more and it probably is because we are very good at under well, they say boat used to stand for bring out another thousand, but with inflation, I think it's more like bring out another 10,000. So Quite easily. Yeah. Anyway, so the breakdown, getting back to the breakdown of what's on the screen. Break it down, baby. Breaking it down. The first one is what we need to do to get back in the water, and that is one. The first lot, so I think it's $2,500, is just to be put back in the water, and that will be, we'll be floating, and the next lot involves that. So the projects that we've shown you in this episode are the projects that we would need to continue at least and travel down towards Costa Rica and on our way to Panama. So we haven't explained the things that we need to cross an ocean, but Lee is about to, so he's going to oh. fill you all in on the things that we would need to do. And a lot of these things are expensive items that we would need to buy, and so they're obviously going to get put on hold because we don't have the... When it financially, we can't at the moment. So what are some of those things, Dad? We don't have radar... We don't have AIS. Before we cross an ocean, we'll do our rigging. Uh, what else? We got a life raft. There's, there's a few. There's a list there. Just to bring you up to speed, because a lot of people I think think that the boat is like good to go, because we've been working on it for so long. They're like, well, yeah. you're nearly there. You must have everything. And it's this isn't. We're not asking for anything. We're just this is where we're at. This is what this video is about. It's just about clarity and where we are, what we're doing, and why it's taking so long. We are going to get back in the water in six weeks and we are going to, whether we're 
just floating or not, we'll probably hobble down back down the Sea of Cortez and go and surf and go and do something because we need to for our souls. If you uh, are sitting there going, shit, I'd like to help and we're not asking for it, but if you are thinking about that, because a lot of amazing people have wanted to help us over the years and if you are wanting to help, now is the time. Um, I'll put our Amazon list in the corner and you can check it out. There's things on there that aren't very expensive. So if you would like to help us in a small way, which is huge for us, then um, go and check out our Amazon wish list. Um, you can donate on our website. Uh, otherwise, just like this video and subscribe to our channel. That helps because that helps with getting sponsors and being able to refit the boat with new things so that we can cross an ocean. So if you aren't already subscribed to our channel and you like our videos and you watch them all the time, please just make the effort and subscribe because it does help us and comment on this video tell us what you think down below remember to be kind we are humans that read this i read all the comments yeah. and you know if it's not positive direct it to sarah not me i don't need to hear it <laughs> <laughs> she deals with it better than i do you think <laughs> i don't think so we can have 100 <laughs> we can have 100 comments and then we have one little bad one and sarah's just a wreck yeah, I'm sensitive, Pretty but sensitive I have definitely one. got a thicker skin. Eight years of being told that all the negative things that you could ever think of, um, it makes you a little bit harder. Just a little bit. Yeah, she's toughened up a bit, this one. <laughs> not right now, I'm not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little vulnerable, guys. <laughs> at the moment. Wait till I'm back in the water and I don't care. If she's can... lying on the beach having a coconut then yeah, yeah. Hit, hit her then. Tell me all, all what you think She then. won't care. I will not care. <laughs> We're thinking about starting consulting with people who either have boat projects or want to ask us questions about living on a boat, having a family on a boat, teenagers on a boat, kids on a boat. Um, we have you know, nearly 10 years experience of living on a boat as a family. A lot of knowledge. We have a lot of things that we've learnt over the years and I'd love to pass on things to people that that could be handy and useful. So as we are lower money, <laughs> it's pushing us to do things that maybe are a little bit out of our comfort zone. So if you... Well, it's, actually, it's actually fun because we have done a bit of consulting and it's actually it's quite really fun. fun. Because so many questions that are um, asked, we we generally have the answers for. Yeah, we usually get off a call and we're like, oh wow, that we were really helpful. Yeah, it's we were like, really helpful. And it in, feels really good to share yeah. all that knowledge that we don't really think much of because it's just what we do. It's part of our life, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's been pretty cool actually. Okay, so Sarah will put something together on the website, and if you want to schedule a time for myself or for both of us or for Sarah, happy to um, consult and help anyone that wants to get out on the water. It's our way of for us to give back to you guys for watching us for all these years and we've inspired a lot of people to go and start cruising. It's important for us to be able to give back and give some knowledge to those of you who actually are and want to know a little bit more than what we share on our videos. Um, be able to talk to us one on one and ask whatever you'd like. All right, thanks for watching that video, guys. Hopefully it brought you up to speed on where we're at. Usually we are really far ahead of our videos, but at the moment we are currently still in the hard set and I am editing real time. So if you'd like to see more of this video, more information, a little bit of an extended version, then make sure you go over to our Patreon page and you can become a patron and you will see some more content that we put on over there. It supports us, it helps us fund our adventure and these videos. So we appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you for watching and remember to smile and have a beautiful day. Bye. You know, there is other means of income that we've managed to work at. And so if you would like to check out Sarah, you can go over to Sarah at OnlyFans.com. <laughs> and she's, uh, it's, it's her domain. I'll leave that one with you guys. But yeah, that really helps. It goes a long way towards our venture. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to that link. <laughs> uh... But we did set one up for the captain, <laughs> so <laughs> it's not an OnlyFans, but if you're into middle-aged men's feet. 
All right, this is getting ridiculous, guys. We're going to wrap this up. But anyway, stay tuned, and uh, we'll keep you up to date. And, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, but if you would like to see Lee's feet, let me know. I can really arrange something. I hear people making a lot of money, and he's got beautiful feet. Uh, For a sailor. We're old salty feet. Beautiful, honey. <laughs> <laughs>